that solar eclipse was all wrong. I want to cuss. I mean, that solar eclipse was all fucking wrong. It was wrong. Something was wrong with it from start to finish. Is wrong. A lot of people were disappointed. And the moon was not our moon. I don't know where that shit came from. I don't even know if it was a spacecraft. I'm thinking some large spacecraft or some other moon that's uh, Nibiru's moon or something. That wasn't our moon. Something was wrong with the whole damn thing. I sat, I got my ass up at 5 o'clock in the morning. I was up before then, but I got up at 5 something in the morning and I went outside, you know. And I looked at, up at the sky. You know, me and my wife, I got her up. She didn't even want to get up. But we looked up at the sky. And basically I called Rays from Another Planet. So you, you can watch uh, my, my Nibiru video where it's Rays from Another Planet. And I, I don't know the name of that video. But I, I was seeing Rays from Another Planet, a big planet. And something you know eclipsed our sun and that wasn't that wasn't the moon I don't know where the moon was I never saw a moon rise I saw the sunrise and I did not see and I was filming right before the eclipse started I was filming the sun that bitch came out of another goddamn dimension that's what it seemed like I didn't I didn't even see the sun was super bright and I was saying that I knew something was wrong. I was saying that, you know, I, on the top of my head, I was like, it's off course, number one. It ain't doing what it's supposed to do, number two. I've seen many eclipses and ain't never went down like this. You could see the moon and the sun going together. This was some fucking bullshit from another dimension or something. I don't know what the hell eclipsed our damn sun, but that wasn't our moon. You know, and I know other people, Some another guy that's in the last video that I made, he was saying the same thing. And then I just want to check and see with other people saying that, do you know, YouTube went out. You know, error, 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 every time I check on wrong moon. It was the wrong moon. And why all these errors? They only telling on themselves because there wasn't no errors until I, I typed in wrong moon. Eclipse 2017. You know, it was the wrong moon. And then what else? Um, I noticed that they had all CBS, NBC, CNN, and all the fake news on the live coverage. Because I was looking for some 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 regular Joe that had his camcorder or his, his, his video footage, you know, on his little tripod and filming it itself. I don't want to watch nothing that they put on there because... I can look at that shit. It almost looked like a paper fucking cutout. They trying to hand you that this is the eclipse. I mean, and people is buying that shit. They on there talking on this live shit like that shit was real. 100% my whole spirit said that shit was fake. And then you go from channel to channel to channel. And I was just trying to find the live coverage. Because I was outside looking at it this morning, this afternoon, and this evening. And, and, and it wasn't right. Nothing was right about it. Nothing. And then I went on YouTube and I was looking at all the live coverage while the eclipse was going on. And that shit wasn't right. You know. And I said, did they set this whole thing up? They already knew people want to see live coverage and everything else. And they hand you a bunch of garbage. A bunch of garbage. They knew some different planet was coming across in our solar system. And it was co c coming close to our sun. And it eclipsed our sun. It was already jacked up from the beginning. Where the sun is going backwards. You know. And they can't explain the shadow going backwards. Which I said. It would have to be a greater light source. And then you can see clearly in my video. That there are some. Uh, before the sun rose you guys. It was some freaking large sun rays in the sky that wasn't our sun something foul is going on I'm gonna tell you uh, something else the sky has been fucking blinking 
Yeah, early in the morning and sometimes late at night. Go outside, look up at the sky. You know, I see the meteors going past. I see these little spacecrafts here and there. I see them, they little flashy lights. I mean, it's just a, it's a glowing light to go across the sky, you know, here and there. I see those, and they travel way up high past where planes, uh, you know, don't travel. Uh, a little higher than a, the average plane. And then, uh, you know, I've seen a multitude of weird things in the sky recorded. Uh, and then, uh, now this. The sky is flashing. So me, my wife, my kids, we outside looking up at the sky. And everybody is shocked. The whole fucking sky lit up and flashed like someone took a fucking picture. And I'm just playing around and say God took a picture of us. But shit. I mean, the, like what, what makes the whole entire sky flash? That keeps happening. Cannot explain it. Don't know what it is. All I know is wrong. Maybe the bell is about to be listed, lifted and God is going to show everybody the kingdom. And a lot of people are going to miss the kingdom. You're going to miss it big time. You know, uh, the sky is crystal clear. For some reason, they didn't chemtrail out here. Crystal clear. And I'm going to go outside right now and see if I can catch this um, Nibiru planet um, on, the, on the down low. I mean going down you know in the sunset because that's where I usually catch it I you know I was hoping to see it during the eclipse sometimes during the eclipse it had turned it, it, it was a, a red ring around it I saw that in someone else's video too a red ring went around it unfortunately I couldn't get it with my camera but I saw it with my eye you guys tell me what y'all think this this whole thing is a hoax it is a cover-up it's something fucking wrong you know and you know you could feel it people could feel it. it it was this is the most biggest disappointment and I even went to Paul Bagley's video just now and just sat there and watched you know his video and and basically the guy in the video saying the shadows are in the wrong place and everybody people set up their camcorders to film it you know go through and and their camcorders missed it because the damn thing was all fucking course it's almost like something was controlling it and they was trying to keep it in front of the sun, you know, and, and, and pull this bullshit off. Y'all tell me what y'all think about that. Because this is, I mean, it's really disturbing me now. That shit was false as shit. Raptor knows. Is the moon a soul recycling center? and are humans actually Cylons? I know it sounds crazy, and it is. We shouldn't even have to ask these questions, but it's very bizarre the circumstantial evidence that I have compiled here to make me ask this question. So thank you for joining me this edition of Leak Project. How the heck are you? Who made it? What was their purpose? How much does it actually affect us while we're alive, let alone when we pass to the next side. And what about the records of the ancients that discussed the earth without the moon? What about John Lear and the program he was a part of where they remote viewed somebody at death, followed their soul to a specific location on the moon And then you see, let's go back to this right here. This is the Tibetan Tonka. The six states, the will of life. Notice Buddha is pointing at the moon. This is available if you want to go see the breakdown of this at joshberteta.files.wordpress.com. I'll leave the link in the video description box. Buddha's pointing at the moon once you make it out of the Baba Kakra or the Tibetan Tonka. Potato, potato, tomato, tomato. I don't know. I just think that Baba Kakra has a kind of a cool ring to it, don't you? <laughs> so, nanny, nanny, nanny. Look at this right now. Literally pointing at the moon. Make you make it outside of the will of life, and then you have an opportunity to win that grand prize. Where do you go? Well, Buddha's saying go to the moon. 
The moon, that's where you need to go. So just imagine how long it would take you to get out of this Baba Kakra. Like, could it take a thousand lifetimes, a hundred thousand lifetimes, a million lifetimes, one lifetime? I don't know. Let's say it takes you six lifetimes to get out of this thing. And then you see Buddha, but he's like, hey, over there, go over there. The moon, that's the way out. Is he tricking you? A lot of people say go to the light when you pass. If you read the New Testament, clearly the New Testament, especially in my opinion, Jesus and the 12 disciples represents the sun of our solar system, the sun, the sun, but with the UO interchangeable. The only way to heaven, the only way to the Father is through the sun. I think that Jesus is representing the actual sun of our solar system as some type of stargate or something some type of energy source when you pass. Maybe the initiates know that if you follow the yellow brick road, you go through the sun. Maybe that is an escape route to a different level. Well, what happens if you go the route of the moon? I mean, what if the moon's artificial? There's a lot of speculation that it is artificial. And I've asked this question many times before also. Is the, is the moon an artificial construct? Now, if we go to the Earth without the moon, this is available at varchive.org. Let me just read some excerpts from this real quick. The period when the Earth was moonless is probably the most remote recollection, recollection, sorry, nanu, nanu, of mankind. Democritus and Anaxagoras taught that there was a time when the Earth was without the moon. Now. Aristotle wrote that the Arcadia in Greece, before being inhabited by the Hellenes, what's up with all these words, man? Had a population of Pelasgians, and that these Aborigines occupied the land already before there was a moon in the sky above the earth. For this reason, they were called Proselenes. To make a long story short, The three theories of the origins of the moon in this essay. Did the moon or originate at the same time as the earth? No. Was it formed in an area not close to the earth? Most likely. In a different part of the solar system. Was it later captured by earth? Well, how was it captured by earth is the question. Now, both sides of the Atlantic preser uh, preserve a memory of a time when the earth was without the moon. interesting now when John Lear talks about how they did that remote viewing session and they followed that guy they got in a car crash they followed his soul to the moon and he hypothesizes that it's a recycling center so what do they do this shoot you back down to earth and when the moon was parked there is that what caused the great flood how far back does it go that's the question because I just found an artifact that could be 450,000 years old that is very similar in shape of the Venus carving statue discovered. Well, there's been statues and carvings discovered. The one I'm referring to also is the carving in a cave in France. Let me share that with you real quick. Where is it at here? right here the Venus of La Selle it's about 20 25,000 years old with a 13 pointed horn right here you can see she looks like a cone head to me see that doesn't that look like a cone head but you can see you know and it's like a I'm not gonna go there I'm not gonna go there but there's 13 lines in here. People feel that might represent the 13 menstrual cycles of a female every year. 
So this is about 25,000 years old. They found a whole bunch of other statues and carvings, other locations as well, that are just as old. Some that are older, like I said, one that might be 450,000 years old, Neolithic time frame. Now, the New Jerusalem, I just wanted to point this out real quick. This is a great website, blog.world.mysteries.com. John Michael reconstructed the geometric pattern of the heavenly city, and this is what he came up with from Revelation 21. So you get the Star of David in there, a multitude of different shapes, geometrical patterns. Fascinating indeed. And then you can link it to this, I noticed, which is awesome. There's a glyph out there, the Nazca lines that are huge. The Sun Star Cross perfectly matches the New Jerusalem diagram. You can see right here. I'm going to do a podcast on this later. Look at the sacred geometry. Beautiful. Now, this is just discussing that how between 72 and 77, the seismometers installed on the moon by the Apollo missions recorded moonquakes. So when they deliberately crashed the Apollo 12 on the ascent stage, whether or not they actually did that or not, I, I'm really debating, believing almost anything that NASA tells us now. Yet, I do think there's enough information outside of just NASA to verify that when objects hit the moon, like large objects, it rings like a bell, which means it very well could be hollow, some type of structure or that something that's been hollowed out or maybe it was created that way from the beginning which could absolutely make sense some type of vessel for a different entity a different being a different class a different you know from a different location to be able to just watch and keep an eye on you in plain sight and you never even know it so moonquakes you know look outside of nasa if you want information that's independent as well that verifies the same thing that these just bizarre occurrences happen. Something will hit it, it rings like a bell. This I find even more interesting. And this is showing the surface gravity from the moon. They're called maskins. They're very, they're like gravitational thrusters. And I think they're there specifically for a reason. You know, you hear about how the tidal waves are influenced by the moon how uh, women's monthly cycles are influenced by the moon. I know people that listen to police radar all the time, and they say full moon it just is usually more hectic. So some type of energy something. You know, whether or not it's the sun bouncing off the rays from the moon and other suns and other stars bouncing off frequencies from the moon and then it's hitting the earth, maybe that's the case as well. Maybe there's something in there creating some type of frequency, some type of resonance, some type of control, uh, control structure, mechanism. And once you leave the physical body, then it like sucks you in or it will attempt to suck you in. So do you go to the light? Do you go to the moon? Well, you know, Buddha says go to the moon. But if it's an artificial construct, was it created for our benefit or was it created to recycle us? It's like, here, I mean, think about it for a minute. Let's go back here. This is just crazy, if you really think about it. The will of life. Think about how long it takes to get out of these cycles. And then, you're supposed to look up to Buddha, right? And he's like, hey, go to the moon, go to the moon. And then you go to the moon, and like... Then you start all over again. Like, we got you. <laughs> you thought you got away, but we got you. Brings you right back in. That's interesting. The Earth without a moon. Plutarch wrote in the Roman questions, there were Arcadians of Evanders following the so-called pre-lunar people. Similarly wrote, sim nanny nanny, man I need to get some glasses. The Arcadians are said to have possessed their land before the birth of Jove. And the folk is older than the moon. There's actually parts in the Bible that I wanted to show you guys, where's it at? Here we go. Some allusions to the time before there was a moon may be found also in the scriptures in Job 25.5. The grandeur of the Lord who makes peace in the heights is praised and the time is mentioned before 
there was a moon and it did not shine. Also in Psalm 72 5 it is said thou was feared since the time of the sun and before the time of the moon. So since the time of the sun and before the time of the moon a generation of generations a generation of generations means a very long time. You don't say Captain Obvious. Of course it is of no use to counter this psalm, the myth of the first chapter of Genesis, a tale brought down from exotic and later sources. Not erotic, but exotic. Okay. Interesting. The moon rings like a bell, and it bounces off swamp gas from Uranus, then the rings of Saturn. Hello! And then it connects to the moon. Now, let's read a quick excerpt. Lunar maskins alter the local gravity above and around them sufficiently that low and uncorrected satellite orbits around the moon are unstable on a time scale of months or years. The small perturbations in the orbits accumulate and eventually distort the orbit enough that the satellite impacts the surface. Now, this is from phys.org. Shaded map of moon reveals titanium treasure troves. How in the heck did so much titanium alloy, like heavy-duty concentrates, concentrations of 1 to 10 percent across the moon? And in closing, are we the Cylons? Well, now we'll go a few more minutes here. Are we the Cylons? You ever wonder that? Are we the Cylons and the moon is our resurrection ship? That's our recycling center. That's why Buddha's saying go to the moon because something happened and now this quantum physics entanglement, the simulation that we're in, in order to stay, you know, if we get a little too far out of the simulation, then that's the resurrection ship to bring you right back. The resurrection ship. You remember that from Battlestar Galactica? They couldn't be too far away from their ship, otherwise they couldn't be resurrected. But if they were close enough to the ship, they didn't care because they'd just be recycled. <laughs> so ancient roots of the moon god. So what I want to do is I want to find out when that moon was parked there. You know, if that moon was parked there and that caused the Great Flood, well, then we need to get to the archaeological evidence and find out the time of when the flood happened that's talked about in the Bible. If that's the case, it's not that old. Or at least it's, it hasn't been here that long. If the Great Flood's from, let's say, let's just say 6,000 years ago. That's not very long ago. Let's say it's from 10,000 years ago. That's not very long. Let's say it's from 20,000 years ago. That's really not very long. Now, if you're going back a half million years, you know, if you're going back around the time frame that supposedly the Anunnaki arrived here. But here's, a, here's another thing, you guys. If the Anunnaki are demigods, people have made very good arguments about why in the world would they need to genetically modify humans to mine gold for them. Can they just do it themselves with their own technologies and, and create it out of, like, light? Or just change the carbon molecule around a little bit and you know, add a few more protons or just change up that frequency. So, boom, there you go. You've got yourself a uh, piece of gold instead of a piece of charcoal. And those are some great arguments. I think that there's a lot more to it. I think it was more of a kind of like humans create elementals. Some magicians and some people that practice the arts. And I feel that that's why recently when I've opened up my Franz Barden book, twice in a row and I was going to share it with you guys I was going to do a podcast I was like okay what should I what should I share with Leak Project and the crew and I think the reason I pulled up that page both times was because it made me realize that the especially when it talks about how Enki created humans with clay and clay is often referred to well elementals can be created in the same fashion so imagine a higher form of being that's just a you know that's a few degrees away in a higher vibrational realm, and they can therefore create these elementals and do things that are even greater in some senses than what we think we can do. Or think we can do. Now just remember that key word. So, I don't know. 
I think it's more for the enjoyment and also there they did it as like we would create an elemental if we wanted something to find something for us or something we've talked about Chris Angel before and how he probably has some how Franz Barden used some as well people think it's stage magic sometimes in reality it's real magic it's these elementals that have been created I would say it's the same reason that's why they created us that's why they manipulated us because they wanted certain things and they uh, wanted to take their time elsewhere and thought what better way than to manipulate mankind or the earth beings at that time. Now, with that said, I don't necessarily buy into the Nibiru thing yet because I still can't find any solid facts on Nibiru. I mean, I found a couple tablets that Zachariah Sitchin had shown and translated with his translations, which is fine, but I've already, um, by going through the 12th planet, been able to... Um, take his version of the May as being uh, layers of spacesuits for Inanna. And I feel the May, based upon it being considered the tree of life in the Sumerian tablet that I read you guys a few days ago, and there's just so much other information that would make me think the May, me, is you, is me. It is the DNA code that creates... It's like push. It's making them alive through you, through me, through our future generations. The me. The me. The DNA. The serpent code. So, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. Zachariah Sitchin, brilliant. Uh, I think that very intelligent man, but the more information I'm doing here, and I'm connecting these other dots as well, I think there's more to the story, at least in regards to that. The me, the may. So how old is the moon? Is it... And is this chick a conehead? Seriously. These are some Venus figurines. You ever hear the saying, men are from Mars, women are from Venus? Remember that book? Maybe that's true. I mean, maybe literally women are from Venus. And probably be more like Europa, uh, Europa or something like that. Or Titan. I know I'm stretching. It's a stretch here. But certainly, you look through these multitudes of sculptures. You know, this one's over 30,000 years old with ceramics. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're just, they're just apes. They're just apes doing that, man. Bullshit. We were a lot more than apes 30,000 years ago, ladies and gentlemen. They didn't just magically start making ceramic pottery and stuff 30,000 years ago. Timeshare. Wake up. How long would it take for people to learn how to do this kind of stuff? Welcome to the new New World Order where they love you so much they'll do anything to lie to you. And sell you sweet treats of genetically modified E. coli feces disguised as less fat, less calories. Now, clearly, I would think that they would... Never mind. I'm not going to go there. <laughs> you know where I'm going with this, right? You guys know where I was going to go with that. Did they have other sculptures then as well that were a little bit more proportionate? Just wondering. But look at this list of the same types of statues, you guys. Germany, Austria, Czech Republic, France, Russia, Italy, 24,000 years old, 30,000 years old, 40,000 years old. This one right here is made out of mammoth ivory. Could be 40,000 years old, maybe even older. And of course, the internet is not working because I'm doing this podcast. Gremlins, this image right here, if it pulls up, oh, ivory, yeah, well, I think it's got a lion head. Did lion people walk the earth 40,000 years ago? Is it going to pull up? No. Did lion people walk the earth 40,000 years ago? 
I ask myself that question all the time. I mean, doesn't everybody? And this could be you. This whole thing could be you, could be me. When I talked to, what's his name, Prava? Really nice guy, very smart from India, extremely well educated. And I told him about that experience that I had where I felt like I was Archon food. And I felt like I saw Yama. He said, that's you. If you look at it that way, it puts things into a whole new perspective. And if I got the gentleman's name wrong, I apologize. Very intelligent man. I am just, I talk to so many people and names from other countries are not my strong point. So genuinely apologize. Thank you for being here with me. Heck, I can barely speak English. So, you guys have a beautiful day. Be excellent to each other. Question everything. If you've got any new dots that you want to help me connect here, please send it my way in the comment section. And also, make sure to subscribe to leakproject.com if you want access to the latest podcasts and if you want access to exclusive shows. There are dozens of shows that are only available at leakproject.com. Uh, it's 10 bucks a month or 50 bucks a year, and your contributions greatly help me and Leak Project. And the more information I can bring to you guys, the more people that I can find around the world that can send images in, like that really nice guy the other day that sent in pictures directly from Oxford on the Sumerians Kings list. You know, that takes a lot of time to do that, so I really appreciate you guys out there doing that for me. And if I can eventually get enough money together then I want to get this on cable. I want to get this on public television as well so anybody can have access to it. And I'd also like to get this on the streaming devices. It just takes money and time. So this is a one-man operation right now as far as inside of the complex. <laughs> I've got all of you guys out there helping me out, but as far as some of the logistics go, uh, it's just it's time and money. So thank you for your support. That is my shameless plug. Be excellent to each other, you guys, and it's always a wonderful time to be the change you want to see. Yeah.